What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat. We are here at the Nerd Castle today and I know I just said Nerd Castle like 400 times in one sentence, but it's all right. I mean, I feel like it bears repeating because the NCE and the Nerd Castle are pretty damn awesome. In this episode of Memoria, we're probably going to keep things trucking along with our new metal supplies. We're keeping it pretty metal here in the Kingdom of Nemoria. Things are looking a little bit more organized, a little bit more neat, and I think that is something that needs to be spoken to. I mean, I am liking the way the base is going underground right now. Obviously, this isn't going to be how it is forever. We need to do some stuff up on the surface to make sure that things are really looking good. And we had talked about maybe doing a flop house over here. But in this episode, let's take a look at our bronze supply. I don't know what we're looking like on bronze bars right now. Ooh, we are slapping them bars out. Fantastic. So, with 12 bars, that affords us the ability... We have to make four pauldrons, One, two, three, four, and so that's eight plates gone. And then we also, I think gauntlets only cost one, so yeah, there it is, one, two, three, four. And I think that's going to be a pretty good use. Putting gauntlets over their hands is going to keep them from getting their hands chopped off or anything else like that in battle. Kind of give you an extra layer of protection just to make sure you don't end up with any gnomes that are requiring, like, extra assistance. Because, you know what? We're running, I mean, there's not a whole lot of money to go around in Nopton, so having to pay the salaries of people who have given their body parts in the line of duty, we will do it because it is the right thing to do. But it doesn't mean that we have to, like, not prepare for it in the first place. If we can preempt that from occurring, then I feel like if we can keep ourselves from losing hands during the course of this adventure, it's probably, I mean, I'll, I'll refer it to the Department of Gnomish Hands and see what they have to say about it. We're big on bureaucracy around here. We're going to refer it over there. We'll see what they send back. If they send back, we'll make a committee. But I think we got to make a subcommittee first. So the subcommittee will vote on the formation of a real committee, which will then take votes on whether, you know, first, second, I, 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 nay, 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 and so forth. A merchant from the Ragged Kingdom has arrived. We will allow them to come into our domiciles. But be warned, Kingdom of the Rag. If you do not give us a good deal, your life is forfeit. We will kick you into a pit. We have a ceremonial pit that we keep just for merchants such as yourself. So let's go ahead and with this merchant, the first thing that I'd really like to do is just kind of get rid of stuff. We may also want to cut some gems because he's going to be here for a while anyways. And the gems are going to go for a lot more cash if we can cut them. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of the raw sapphire. And we'll just see how that goes. Because those are going to be worth eh, not substantially more. As I recall, they're only worth like 16 to like 30 or something like that. It's been a long time though, so I wouldn't use my numbers for like your uber awesome Excel sheet that you're going to put up on the internet or something. Don't trust me for nothing. I always mess this stuff up. The wheelbarrows are no longer being used, but that was the greatest piece of information that anybody has ever given me because we had way too much beer and the time had come where we must haul it in wheelbarrows. Just to know, that, let the neighboring kingdoms know that this is how we roll. Look at our wheelbarrows. It's pretty badass. I don't think we have a second ambassador here. We just have the one from the Rag Kingdom. That's going to be fine. Our drink supply is finally increasing. And the goal with this trader is to get ourselves a pair of emus. The last time I saw, I think she had emus. And so I can only assume... Oh, she has alpacas. Okay, well, the alpacas are not so attractive by comparison to the emus. The emus are kind of a big deal. And so that's a little disappointing because I was really hoping to get some emus out of this because they lay eggs, which then takes pressure off of our food supply from the farms, which means we can then dedicate more of our farming supplies to making drinks, and then we can have the eggs turned into omelets, which are really, really good for your gnomes. So since we don't even have that, I'm not going to trade for alpacas right now. All that alpacas do is alpacas, as I recall, eliminate the need for a cotton field. If I remember correctly, they just like shed wool all over the place. And so I think it makes it so that you don't need cotton fields anymore. But I would prefer to have the cotton fields because of this reason right here. The cotton fields produce cotton seeds as a side product which have one value. And you just have loads of them laying around so they make for really good trade fodder. Let's get rid of 103 cotton seeds. Or 183. We're going to get rid of... I think we have a 7x7 wheat field so we can get rid of... I'm going to be safe. I'm going to get rid of 80 wheat seed rather than 100. Even though I think we'd be safe at 100. Exactly safe on 100. Just in case something weird happens. Strawberry seeds, I think we have... What were those? Those are 4 by... Like 10s, like 40s. So we would need... We can get rid of... I'm going to be safe one more time and just give myself 20 extra seed in case. We'll go... 200 seeds right there. Not doing too badly with regards to what we're getting out of this deal. With the cotton, we can definitely get rid of that. We'll get rid of 100 cotton. We don't need that much. We're going to have another harvest pretty soon anyways. 
And once that cotton's out of the way, is that pretty much all of our tradable goods, or do we have more down here? We have a lot of clippings. I'm not going to get rid of those because we might need them like, later because I've been messing up left and right doing dumb stuff, just wasting it. I think... Oh yeah, we have the puzzle boxes. How did I forget those? Okay, so I made a bunch of puzzle boxes in between episodes, and so I'll get rid of those. We'll get rid of the copper helmet. Got ourselves at 904. Not too terrible. Get rid of the worn copper hammer, and that puts us at 906. Let's use the opportunity to get ourselves a female yak. No, not two female yaks. One female yak. That'll help us breed a little bit quicker, so that we can keep our butchery going at a faster rate. Or at least the chance of getting more females faster. And then we're going to trade for food with the remainder. So we'll go with all of the apple wines, all of the grape wines, all of the strawberry wines, the apples, the grapes, the strawberries. The grape seed we'll take for later so that we can plant some vineyards. We'll also take just about everything that they have that's going to save us a bit of time. We'll take the orange clippings, the birch clippings, the apple clippings. Oh, never mind. I didn't realize that that said one. Those say ten. Okay, so we need to take those off the list. So the grape seeds are probably going to be the last thing we're going to be able to get out of this deal. So 827. We can still make this work a bit better. So we'll take the birch logs. Which will put us at 867. we got 33 left. This guy up here selling dirt like it's a commodity. What in the hell? I'm going to get rid of a thousand dirt just to get it out of my storage. It's not worth anything, but I don't want to have it anymore. I could get rid of some marble, but whatever. So we've got to make up for a 33 difference right now. Take the pine logs, which leaves us with a 15 difference, which is then divisible with these right here. And I'll take, I don't know, like three granite or something. No idea. And so, oh, never mind. We were at 906. I thought we were at 900 on the dot. Well, and pass me another granite, mate. There it is. And so we will trade it. Bammo. And so we should be in a little bit better of a situation right now with regards to all the stuff that we have. It's going to be piled up on the ground right here in a massive stack. And eventually all of our random haulers will get at it. Hopefully my rancher comes around and grabs this extra yak that I bought. And puts it in the field. Because then we will have multiple baby yaks that will be all gestating. How did yaks get their name? I assume that that stands for something in a different language. Because in English, if somebody, if you named them a yak, I would assume that it throws up all the time. At which point I would kind of be doubtful of your ranching skills. If your cattle are throwing up all the time, it's like... Blah, 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 blah. Like, this is my cow. His name's Dave. Say hello, Dave. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, Dave, you are socially unpleasant. Nonetheless, Dave, let's cut some sapphire gems because I am interested in playing around with some of the sapphire ideas that we've had laying around. We've got a bunch of bronze bars happening over here. I don't think anybody has even started on any of the armoring tasks. However, I think they need... I don't know. They're still making coal over here. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. If they don't jump on it in a minute, I've probably got conflicting jobs around here somewhere. That's like the case, I think, probably about 95% of the time with the way I run my society. Not going to start building houses below ground just yet. Although his smelting is kind of interesting. As much as I applaud him for continuing the smelting effort. Are we all out of meat again? Oh, I guess we are. Interesting. Well. There it is. Let's see what these things are worth. I've actually been kind of curious. It's been a while since I've done this. I think they're between like 30 and 40 once they're cut. I don't recall though. It's one of those random things that... A cut sapphire gem. It's poorly cut. So 14 for a poorly cut. So it's probably around 20 for like a normal. It's alright. It's not something that I was just kind of crafting those out to increase their worth. Without actually having to do anything. It's basically the lazy man's way of getting more money out of a product. And then there goes some of the earlier crafting. We've got a bronze plate right there. Kind of keeping an eye on, if you're wondering, I'm keeping an eye on to see what the quality is of the things that he's crafting. The breastplates that we got were both of poor quality, which was a little disappointing. It left me feeling a bit disappointed. I mean, I was just like, well, a poor bronze breastplate is still better than anything by leaps and bounds that we had produced previously. So we're sitting at 8,700. We need to not slow our roll. I think we're going to be all right. 191 food, 247 drink, and I think we still have one harvest left to go. Maybe, if we pull it out fast enough, we'll see. It'll be right at the edge. 
But we do need more farmers, so I'm hoping at the beginning of the next season... I don't know if nomads show up at the beginning of... I'm not so positive if nomads show up at the beginning of winter. I can't remember. It's been a long time. We'll find out. We may make it in this episode. I can't guarantee that we will or won't. But at the beginning of winter, we're going to have to change up our strategy a little bit. Not too much, because we've got all of the preliminary things that I prefer to have before we go into winter. How come nobody is using a wheelbarrow? You guys are hauling so much stuff, and yet nobody's taking a wheelbarrow. I bet it's because they're all stacked in one spot, and the wheelbarrow functions like a vacuum cleaner. It just trucks around and gets it done. I should probably put some seed bags in here. Let's do that. So we'll go storage. We'll put some seed bags. Just a bunch of seed bags in here. Just a ton of them because we don't have a whole lot of people working on other things right now. And once that gets done, and oh my god, you guys, talking about seeds and like wool and everything, the trees right now in my neighborhood are just pissing down like this white fluff. And you can just, you can physically feel like my tonsils and just like my adenoids and just like everything. Just kind of like reflexively just being like, oh my god, it's time again. It's that time of year where I get to sit around with a sore throat for like the next three months. Just being miserable. Just like, oh my god. <laughs> my blood just starts producing Claritin as a side effect. It's like, well, it's time. Let's make this thing happen. Let's go. It is go time. The other thing that I'd like to do is disassemble all these and put in real beds. So we'll probably do that in this episode too. Taking a look at our cumulative log stocks. Oh good, we've got another honey badger in the hood. Now this one they didn't attack, so this one must have either looked meaner than the others, or this one has heard the legend and has just decided to run away and not participate any further. How are we doing on the production of those metallic goods? Not so great. Not so great. We've got the wood. Oh, they're sleeping, that's why. Okay, so that works out. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna make a, the situation into one of the grousing, I think. Have we cut any good sapphires yet? A finely crafted cut sapphire gem. There we go. Do we have any more gems? I, I thought we had another vein laying around somewhere. I should probably get on that too. But taking them and putting them on mining duty will conceivably take them off the other jobs that I've given them. And I want them on the job right now, although not in like the euphemism sense. I just, I don't need them doing that in the middle of the hallways. That would be absolutely terrible. I'd be like, well, now I have to put black boxes all over my gnomes and those little pixelated squares because terrible things are happening. We've reached that point. I mean, it's not terrible for them. I applaud, I applaud their entrepreneurial spirit, I suppose, in trying to produce more gnomes, but it doesn't work like that, guys. I assume that you're all suffering from like hybrid sterility or something because gnomes always struck me as being kind of the amalgamation of dwarves and hobbits so there is the possibility that they just can't breed hybrid infertility the joys of the selective process making a ton of cotton string so as to make bags ah they made that pretty quickly actually oh wow they're killing it over here good couldn't have asked for like anything better I'm always, I'm frequently surprised how rapidly they're getting this construction done, and I must, I think that I must have just been woefully inefficient in my past playthroughs, because I always feel like anytime I queue something up to happen in No Mori, it doesn't happen. And during the course of this LP, I've always felt like they've been doing things at a pace that, I'm, pr I'm not proud of it, but I mean, it gets done, as opposed to the way I felt in the past, which is just like, oh my god, we're sitting here waiting forever for anything to happen. I do think it's probably a good idea... We've got pine planks. I think we're looking a little bit low. Let me see here. I don't know if we're looking a little bit low or if that's just the cap. I think that's the cap I set. So let's go with... We'll make some birch tables. And then once we make... Oh, I don't know. Maybe... Ten of those. We'll put them in the dining hall. And while I think I might be overstepping myself a little bit, I know that before the second season, you don't really want to crest over 12,000 worth. And I think we are getting there, because one of the things some people don't realize is that everything you craft in this game has worth. So, for example, whether it's in use or not, these gnomes out here who have bronze armor, they are just, like, hanging out. Oh, I should have made another bronze cuirass. I wasn't thinking. Bad plan on my part. Have they already made everything down here? So we've already made a pauldron. Or no, we haven't, actually. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and two, three, four. We'll get rid of those because I think you needed four for a breastplate. So yeah, we'll craft a breastplate at the end to make sure that we get that done. And then going into like, this should be a fairly easy mode playthrough. One of the big kind of hurdles that you're going to run into in the earlier game is can you get to bronze before the end of your first year? We've actually made it almost a full bronze. I would wager to guess that before winter's over, we'll be in full bronze with bronze weapons more than likely would be if I had to just kind of stab out there and give it a feel for where I think we'll be at the beginning of year two. We'll probably have bronze weapons as well. Bronze shields, bronze weapons, anything you could really prefer for combat. And so at that point, we'll be able to stick it to the goblins because I think in the second season they start coming with armor. But the pleasant thing there is they only come with copper armor. So if you have bronze gear, it cuts through the copper like it's not even there. It's actually pretty astounding. I feel as though we have a lot of people idle right now. We've got Doodle Emble Fuzzy, who's hanging out and being an engineer. Well, it might be a good idea to give them a job to do. So let's set up the floor plan for our first house, our flop house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build terrain here. And we're going to put in a... I didn't get a... Fr I think they're just training. It scared me for a second. I heard the din and the roar of combat. So we need to build terrain. We're going to go to wall. And I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with a block wall. And they're going to be marble blocks, obviously. And let's just get something kind of laid out here. I don't know. We'll go like five right there. And I think we'll kind of stagger it like so. Might not be the most incredibly efficient method, but I enjoy building things. So if you've ever seen my playthrough of, say, towns, you will know that I enjoy building things, even though I'm not very good at it. Go five right there. That's looking okay. I don't think it looks so bad. We'll skip one right there and we'll go another five. I do feel as though something's not lined up properly though. I think it's just my brain messing with me. And I think that's placed improperly too. There it is, that's what I wanted. And so we'll cancel this job right here. And then back on this side, We've got another one back behind it. I'm trying to mirror it because my OCD is just going to bother the hell out of me this entire time if things aren't symmetrical. I'm very jealous of people that can make like weird MC Escher type stuff that's just all over the place. Because if I did that, my entire time I would just... It would drive me crazy. This is coming from somebody that notices when my computer fan is running for too long and just starts to drive me nuts and I'm just like, Nyeh. stop that, stop that. I have to put on like headphones and turn on music or something, otherwise I just sit and fixate on it. We go back to terrain and then we go to wall. So those are going in by one, and then we just bring it on back to a five space. Yeah, it looks nice. Actually, let's fill in the back wall. We're just going to have that have a front entrance, and it'll be okay. It'll definitely be okay. We'll remove the designation from this spot right here, and I, I'm sorry, if you guys aren't really into Minecrafty type stuff, that's basically the turn that this playthrough is going to take, since there's not a whole lot of things going on. I'm just going to start building stuff, and just kind of having fun with it, and making kind of multi-floor domiciles and just kind of fiddling around and making Nompton into like a little gnomish city that I can enjoy. So if, I mean, that's pretty much the end of kind of my early game tutorial knowledge that I could give to you guys. If you've made it to bronze by the end of the first year, I would suggest that you try and make it to iron by like the third year or steel. And then from there, just kind of take the challenges as they go and just kind of play around with the different systems that are in place. There are lots of like binary systems and things you can play around with, booby traps, doors you can activate with switches, like redstone type stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do that just because binary logic and things like that, just never switch logic. Always something that sort of escaped me. I did very poorly in my number theory classes. It was a subject that just bored me tremendously. It was just something that, you know how sometimes you hit those things that, in school that you just hate studying? That's what it was. Number theory just didn't do it for me. Some people are really into that, and you can do some really amazing things with number theory. I was more... I enjoyed statistics, and I enjoyed calculus to a certain extent. But, yeah, I think number theory was kind of the class for me that I got in, and I was just like, oh my god, I, if I have to do another... If I have to do another problem about bagels, baguettes, and sandwiches all being ordered by your coworkers in random amounts with, like, turkey and ham and everything else, I think I'm going to blow my brains out because that was a class that I struggled with. I struggled hard with number theory. This was back when I was a computer science major, but calculus I enjoyed the hell out of. I thought calculus was pretty wonderful. I enjoyed physics as well. Physics, 
I felt like physics was a little bit tiresome at points because it was really after I took physics after I took calculus and so my calculus class was very kind of physics oriented and so I basically understood most of the precepts it was just kind of putting them into action and so it felt like I had taken the same class twice which was the big reason why physics sort of bored me it wasn't because the subject matter wasn't interesting it's because my calculus class had basically already incorporated all that I'm gonna cut clippings from all these pine trees by the way and we'll put them back in here now is this work being done by that's why it's not getting done it's being done by the farmers okay so I do I'm hoping with the next round of people we get I can get a couple more farmers we could use another farmer for sure but anyways as I was saying I enjoy calculus you should always for my younger viewers out there hang in there with math like as you start to see the ways that it's applicable in life I hated math when I was in high school I failed algebra like 50 times like I just didn't go to class I hated it I was always skipping so believe me I understand I absolutely hated school in all respects when I was younger I still actually don't really enjoy school I enjoy learning but I don't like being taught I guess because I always feel like people are teaching at me rather than like teaching me if you take the distinction but anyways give it another shot stick in there because math can never hurt you there will come a time where you're gonna need upper level math for any job that for any job that matters I guess is the way that I would put it and unfortunately lacking those skills is gonna cut you out of the race pretty quickly I've lost entire careers that way so take it from me stick with it because you will find that you have kind of hoisted yourself up by your own petard later on I love that phrase I'm gonna use that phrase all the time from now on somebody used that in a sentence like three days ago and I've just been using it left and right I've been like you know what that's like it's like hoisting yourself up by your own baton and I've been saying it all over the place because I get the best most confused looks every time I use it and everything I do in life is kind of just to get reactions out of people I really I in real life I am such a huge troll like I love poking the tiger and just like seeing what'll happen just like messing with people and they just be like hold on buddy I was just kidding don't have to get mad about it <laughs> kind of a dickish thing to do but honestly I'm bored so much I've just I would describe myself as being just habitually bored my entire life just like I really need to find something to like dedicate myself to and that's why I enjoy YouTube so much is this like these 30 minute sections that I spend with you guys are one of the few times that I'm not feeling tremendously bored did these people put on by the way I haven't been talking about the game but have people been putting on okay so he put on a pauldron he's got one pauldron right now he's trying to be a badass he just got done running SM and what about you smash nasty Oh, she's got two pauldrons. Even better. Good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So with where we're sitting at right now, we're basically just going to continue armoring people, making sure that everything that they have is up to snuff. Tin armor plate. What in the hell? Hold on. What? Did I not designate that as... I think I screwed up. I think I told them to just like do whatever for that there we go and so that should get it back in motion yeah I think I told I must have clicked the wrong thing and just said make like a whatever breastplate just make it out of whatever pieces you can find it'll be perfectly okay got a bunch of tables stacked up right now so I think what I'll do is I'll build these into our dining hall I'm gonna try and do this in some sort of decorative fashion. I don't know if it's gonna work. It might just look stupid after I get it done, but like how far in from the wall are we right there? And so I think we are Okay, so we're one in from right there. And so once I get all of those placed, that doesn't look lined up to me. I don't know why, that is just not feeling right. Okay, so I was right. Let me put the new job in right there before we waste a table here. Drop that bad boy in right there. There we go. That's looking a little bit more lined up. And what I may do is actually connect these across the middle and then just put a ton of chairs around. It might look kind of cool. I don't know. It'll look cool to me because I like goofy things and I don't know why you would ever. It's kind of inefficient to use tables that way, but it might work. Might look kind of cool. My other thought is that maybe I might do some kind of circular pattern with the tables. 
but then it's just kind of like the inner space of the tables is no longer functional. No matter what, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Nomoria. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.